Robots like this one are catching the attention and billions of investment dollars from big tech companies like Amazon, Google, Nvidia, and Microsoft. And now machine learning is enabling the machines to figure out on their own how to solve problems. You put together the algorithms, the data, and the computer chips, and you get sometimes a million-fold improvement. Elon Musk is betting the future of Tesla on these machines. Well, wow. they're making love for these robots. Keep making babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Investing in the robotic sector represents one of the most promising opportunities of our time. With a global market that reached $62 billion in 2020 and is expected to grow to $260 billion by 2030, interest in robotics is steadily increasing. This sector encompasses a wide range of applications from industrial automation to companion robots, each with significant growth and innovation potential. Today in manufacturing, we are short about 300,000 people. And it's something very similar in warehousing and logistics. So we are somewhere around six, 700,000 jobs we can't fill. Big driver, artificial intelligence. These bots have seen quantum leaps in what they're capable of in just the past few years, thanks to AI. Industrial automation is a key segment of robotics. Companies are increasingly adopting robots to improve production efficiency, reduce operational costs, and enhance product quality. According to the International Federation of Robotics, IFR, the number of industrial robots installed has grown by 10% annually since 2015, reaching a record 3 million operational units in 2021. China, in particular, is a world leader in this sector with a growing demand for robots to support its manufacturing expansion. Generative AI is really a key unlock overall for what you can get a robot to do, let alone a humanoid robot. Robotics is where AI meets reality. We are really at the cusp of solving one of the grand challenges of humanity. It'll change labor forever. There is probably a need in the future once the humanoids get a bit more clever, a bit more perhaps autonomy. But until that point, I think the, the market will be fairly limited to PR spectacles. Another rapidly growing area is companion robots. These robots designed to assist the elderly provide emotional support and perform household tasks are becoming increasingly popular. In a world where the population is aging rapidly, the need for solutions that can help maintain the autonomy of older individuals is crucial. Companion robots like those developed by companies such as SoftBank Robotics and iRobot not only offer practical assistance, but also contribute to the emotional well-being of their users. We used to have to really painstakingly teach the machines step by step, program them what to do. And now machine learning is enabling the machines to figure out on their own how to solve problems. You put together the algorithms, the data, and the computer chips, and you get sometimes a million-fold improvement. So one really important thing to do on the factory floor is just be able to recognize objects. And that's something that only humans could do well until recently. At IREX, we witnessed a robot handling a task that I, as a human, don't do so well futzing with one of those pesky tape dispensers. The future of robotics is also promising thanks to continuous advancements in artificial intelligence technology. Robots are becoming increasingly sophisticated, capable of learning and adapting to new tasks with minimal human supervision. This technological progress not only expands the capabilities of robots, but also opens up new opportunities in sectors such as healthcare, agriculture, and logistics services. For example, surgical robots are transforming medical operations, offering unprecedented precision and reducing recovery times for patients. Why would we want humanoids? The prevailing sort of answer has been, the world is built to be occupied by humans. So we want robots that are versatile, that can do a wide range of things, then having it adopt the humanoid form factor always made a lot of sense. Recent leaps in artificial intelligence have resulted in leaps for robotics. The data that they use to train these robots, it's based in real world scenarios. Now a robot can be trained the same way a human is. Investing in individual company stocks represents a direct way to invest in 
leading companies in the robotics sector. Among these, companies like ABB, Fanuc, and Kuka are well known for their expertise and innovation in industrial automation. These companies have a long history of success and a dominant position in the global market, making them an interesting option for investors seeking direct exposure to robotics. We have this technology called teleoperation. The person does the thing 200 times. We record all that data, and then we use that data to train these models. And the AI models are very similar to the GPT-style generative AI models. You feed in the 200 trajectories, and the system learns how the task is being done, and then the robot will do the task autonomously. For those who prefer to diversify risk, mutual funds specializing in technology and innovation offer a good alternative. These funds invest in a portfolio of companies in the robotics and automation sector, reducing exposure to the specific risk of a single company. Mutual funds can be actively or passively managed with the goal of either following or outperforming the market. If I go into a new space, I'm now not looking at spending months trying to code that problem. I can potentially just generate it straight out of Gen AI and be able to have Digit interact with new objects and in new environments without having to develop it all. AI models require massive quantities of data to train off of, and this is no different. If you show the robot enough things, it starts to be able to do things that it hasn't been shown before. ETFs are another popular option. ETFs like the Global X Robotics and Artificial Intelligence ETF or the Robo Global Robotics and Automation Index ETF offer investors the opportunity to invest in a broad portfolio of companies operating in the robotics and AI sector. ETFs combine the benefits of mutual fund diversification with the flexibility of stocks, allowing investors to buy and sell shares during market hours. Big tech is very interested in the big potential this technology promises. If you're going to do AI at the frontier, you need to be partnered with Microsoft or NVIDIA or Google or one of the big players. There's just no other way. They have resources that nobody else has, even governments. NVIDIA's been a great partner up until this point. We're using everything from their hardware to their simulation, and then recently have started working with them on foundation models as well. Another interesting option is investing in emerging startups through crowdfunding platforms or venture capital funds. Startups are often the sources of the most radical innovations and can offer very high returns, although accompanied by greater risk. Companies like Boston Dynamics, which develops advanced robots for various sectors, were originally startups that attracted the attention of visionary investors. Several other startups are developing similar humanoid robots. Sanctuary AI, launched in 2018 in Vancouver, Canada, unveiled its latest robot last year. Phoenix, a 5'7 robot capable of lifting up to 55 pounds. It looks a bit different from other humanoid designs, trading its legs for wheels. Robots with legs, the upper body, including the hands, have to be very weak and light. So instead of doing that, we put our product on a wheeled base. And because we made that trade-off, we can build very powerful, very precise, very fast motors in the upper body. We are talking about technology destined to revolutionize our way of living and working. Companies that develop innovative robotic solutions are positioned to become market leaders in the coming decades. The potential return for investors is high, especially considering the continuous expansion of robotic applications across various economic sectors. China have a rapid uh, salary increase beginning from 2000. It. So we feel the, the little pressure for, uh, from the labor side. So we decided to change a lot our manufacturing system to robot. Bring more robots in. Yeah, and then make the, even the logistics, we use a robot. You seem very happy about this. I... Yeah, 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 because it will make my company more competitive in the, in the field. And you're not worried when, when you lay off those 700 workers? No, no, no they, they can easily get jobs, no problem. If you found this analysis helpful, subscribe to the channel. See you soon.